So we're about to talk about this mom. She had a family, she had things going for herself, but there was just one little secret that nobody really knew about and it cost her her life. This is the area where police say they found the bag with Gall's body. His body was found stuffed inside a duffel bag. The body of 51-year-old Orsaya Gall, a mother and wife, was found inside a duffel bag just blocks from her home. A guy ended up entering her home. When a guy entered her home, he went inside. He kidnapped her in her own home, took her to the basement, packed her up, and left. See that bag that she's in? Her body is in that bag. What happened here was when he snuck into her house, one of her kids was inside the house, but it was just a kid and a mom. I know, and it's a lot of questions. Why did he do that? Is this guy some stranger? What did she do to even make this happen? But we're about to get into that little secret that I was telling y'all about because that's the whole reason why this all happened. Got a secret, can you keep it? One of the neighbors seen, they seen a child that was home left with the mom handcuffed. What happened there was the police was questioning the kid. The kid didn't even know what was going on the whole time. Better lock it in your pocket, taking this one to the grave. And what was happening to his mom while he was in the house in his room. Could have been on a game, he probably could have been asleep. He was handcuffed, he was questioning, but it turned out he had nothing to do with the crime at all. Because that guy who had her in a bag put her body right on the side of the road left it there and he went off that father and the other son was also in questioning but since they was out of state they were safe now there is one more thing that i need to tell y'all the first person that they really wanted to look at though was the father some people thought it was a little bit odd that when you leave somebody broke into the house and kidnapped your wife so since people was a little on the edge about that they was like was it him that was just an speculation though wasn't true this remains an active scene here in forest hills let me give you a live look behind me right now so you can see for yourself now detectives just arrived here at orsoya gall's home moments ago the woman's husband and son were potential suspects in the case sources tell us police no longer consider them persons of interest so that leaves us with one thing who was that guy in the surveillance camera well, guess what? Said, cause two can keep a secret if one of them is dead. So the secret of all of this is this guy named David and the mom had a secret relationship. It all started out when she hired this guy to do some work for the house and it built up from there. She started doing this secret relationship with this guy while having a family, husband, kids. And the day of her murder, you can see the guy who she secretly was in a relationship with on the surveillance camera. The day of her murder, earlier that day, he was planning on murdering her later on that night. See him in the surveillance camera here. And they're like, this guy could be allegedly the killer. He goes to court and I know why. All of this happening, you most definitely got a confused family right now. Something that probably they didn't expect at all. And get this though, it was also said that there was on and off for two years. So she was cheating on her husband with this guy on and off for two years. What drove him to the point though, where he wanted to do this to her? He got a weapon, I think it was a knife, and did it 50 times. The people that I'm finding on these cases is just, it blows my mind because it's like, you could be standing next to somebody right now, you, and it could be a person just like that. Now, I don't wanna wish that on you, of course not, but you just never knew, just like these girls didn't know at all. You know what, I don't even know what to say to that because I don't know how you escape these type of guys, I really don't, because it's almost like you can't escape them. And the only way to escape them is them murdering you. Because if you run, they find you. Like, I really, I'm gonna be honest. I only thought these type of guys exist in movies till I started talking about a lot of true crime cases and I noticed that these guys, it's a lot of them. That's damn scary because I know all y'all girls, all y'all want these days is just some love. Yeah, we get it, sometimes it don't last, but if a breakup happened, it happens, it's life. But guess what? You don't want it to happen. And if it happens, the worst happens. And the last part of the story that I have to say is, remember I said the guy snuck into the house? Apparently he went to the house. We don't know if he was invited or he just showed up, but she let him in. She knew her child was upstairs, sleep, 
let them in, they went in the basement. It was the perfect time since the other son, the father, were gone. And they started arguing. What happened when they argued? Couldn't handle not leaving that girl. When the investigators came to the house, when they was investigating everything, the murder weapon was left at the scene. So it was a crime of passion. I don't know, if this channel don't have y'all ladies on y'all feet and waking y'all up, then hey, live life YOLO. But for the ones who wanna be careful, you got me here. These stories, it gets crazier by the day. <laughs> now we're about to talk about these high school sweethearts. Natalie and Carter, they snuck out the house that late evening and this was the last time these two will ever be alive. The next day around 6 a.m. this local delivery driver noticed two bodies behind the store. It was Natalie and Carter a gunshot wound to both of their heads. So what happened? Roswell police found Carter Davis and Natalie Henderson dead. The investigators noticed that this was around the time of 3 a.m. Why? Because when they checked the CCTV footage, they noticed this white car around the time they died. And this white car was chased back to this guy named Jeffrey. Well, peep this funny story about Jeffrey. One day, a neighbor found Jeffrey swinging a sword in the front yard and he decided to call a cop. I guess the neighbor noticed that something was odd about this dude. Police was called on him again when the rifle went missing. He was then kicked out of his house and he started living with friends. Now remember that store these two was found at? Jeffrey worked at the store and on his Instagram they seen a picture of him. And it said, work sucks but I have to cause trying to get my life straight. And I noticed that his pictures get really, really dark. The things he was saying was really dark. Like why should he be here? He had pictures of him and his girlfriend, how lucky he is to even have her. But since he have a lot of pressure on his arms and in his hands right now, you gotta make life seem normal, right? So the next day, what did he decide to do? Some pictures. One of them was him and his girlfriend at work posted her and another picture of him swimming you know living that normal life after what he just did another day later he was arrested and he was brought in for questioning so things was not looking good for him yikes he was taking it for questioning he was shaking uncontrollably he couldn't help it he was curled up rocking himself back and forth not only that he was crying the police told him we have footage we have pictures of you running away running away the first time after you shot them, run away. He confessed it eventually and he said he followed them in this alley behind the grocery store. He watched these two lovers making out in the back of the car and they might not even see him. He's stalking them. Why? Because he climbed up to the roof of the store to get a better view. Eventually he goes to the car where they was making out that. When they got inside the car, he tells them to open the door. Did you say, did you say to them when you opened the door? So Jeffrey, why did you do it? He said the voices in his head told him to do it. But the bad guy would have gotten you. That's the story that we're going with. The invisible bad guy that looks just like you. Give me a break. Give me a break. And just like that, two lives are gone. She will never get to fulfill her dream of becoming an architect. Natalie will never experience the incredible joy and love of having children of her own. She will never get the chance to change the world for the better. As her family, we will never again hear her beautiful singing or hear her playing her guitar around the house. Now, right now, we're about to jump into in the mind of these murderers. This is about to get a little bit deep, a little bit dark. There's this channel called This Is A Spoon Studios, and they made this film. And I want to know, does it start at a young age? When they see it, do they really do get excited about it? And in this channel, she talks about the statistics while murdering someone. 92.35% of killers return to the scene of the crime the day after. She knows the miles, she knows the distance, she gets it all. 87.24% of homicides happen within 4.2 miles of the killer's home. And she noticed something, a lot of these murderers are men. And 98.67% of all authenticated serial killers are men. And as we know, in a lot of these murders, most of these murders are people that form this connection. Now, in this film, just like real life, she met this guy at work and she started to like him. And she fantasized about him. She wanted kids, a family. Wrong. Wrong, 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 wrong. Usually,
Usually for some people it's that simple. You gain their trust, you start a relationship. When it gets bumpy, it turns into a crime of passion. All I wanna say is, with these murders, they do get caught, but a lot of them don't. Most importantly, these two was in love with each other. They spent their last moments kissing each other. That's crazy.